everyone, it's a late night edition of Matt Chat Live. It's 10 minutes to 10 here in uh, dark North Carolina. I should usually, I'm usually in bed by this time. I'll be right with you in just a moment. Hey there, everyone. It's uh, it's your buddy and your pal, Matt Crump, and I just wanted to jump in tonight to kind of give everybody an update on uh, on my video from yesterday. I'm going to pull this up online real quick to see if I can monitor anybody that might jump on the call. Let's see here. Doesn't sound like I have any audio. Hmm. Can you make a comment if you can hear me on there? Hopefully you can hear me. Well, oh, wait a second. Here we go. Uh, it's your buddy and your pal, Matt. Yes, there it is. All right, my 10-second delay is operating efficiently. <laughs> All right, so I just wanted a, a chance to jump in and, and let you know how much I appreciate a lot of people that have been helping uh, over the past 24 hours to help us with the two orphanages that are under my care and my ministry uh, in Africa. Uh, one is in Kisi, Kenya. The other in Nairobi, Kenya. And uh, two men that run those those orphanages. One's a straight just orphanage. The other one is an orphanage and a church. Um, and they're both incredible men. They both are passionately uh, in love with God and definitely in love with the people in their communities and surrounding areas. And they have given their lives in complete service uh, to serve others. And it is in many times to their demise Many of you that are watching me now have never gone through some of the things these men have had to go through in their lives, and some of you have. Um, there's a lot of stories that I could share, but I, I won't go that deep into that tonight. If you'd like to know, um, I could share some things with you later, and of course, there's some things on my website, so you can check out it as well. Uh, there's been some horrific things that have happened. Uh, we've had children that have died uh, because of disease and hunger, which you would think in your mind uh, from from villages in Africa, that that would be something that would happen. Nothing you want to see happen, but something you could consider that would happen. Um, but then there are the attempted break-ins, the, the people that are constantly just harassing everybody in the orphanage and the workers. Um, we've had incidents where people have come in to physically abuse and beat up uh, the workers and children. Uh, murder children, rape children, um, all these things have happened in the past uh, two or three years of these uh, ministries being in part of what I do. And um, it's a, a heavy weight for me to carry as well. And, you know, for, well, most of you don't really realize this, but for me, even with my coaching, uh, if I get to go speak anywhere or anything like that, uh, my money that would come in that I earn from that uh, goes to primarily the work that I'm doing over there in Africa. I don't keep anything. I'm not pulling a paycheck off of it. I'm using it to supply for the needs of other people. And uh, I mean, the more that things grow for me, I'll just be transparent with you, the more they grow for, for me with coaching and speaking, then I'll, I'll be able to make some different changes there so that I could actually, you know, start affording things for myself and my family and other things as well. Um, but you know, I, I rarely come online to, to ask people to give uh, because one, it's so hard and so many people just don't. And it breaks my heart when that happens and then I get upset and angry and all that kind of stuff. And then I've had children that have died because I've asked people to give and passed. And one time I needed $300 and it took um, almost two weeks to raise $300, almost two weeks of asking people to get 300 bucks. And by the time I got the money, the girl I was trying to raise the money for at our orphanage, she died. She died actually the day I sent the money. I was very angry. And I thought, you know, I just never want to have to ask for money again. I'm hoping and praying that everything that I do is going to be enough to fund what I'm trying to accomplish. And I won't have to ask for money again. I'll just do it that way. Um, so just being, you know, I said, I was being transparent. I am. 
And uh, I had to ask yesterday because the need was so big and COVID is not easy. Obviously, I have no chance to go do speaking engagements right now, so I'm not making any money from that. And as far as coaching is concerned, not a lot of, not a lot of people are spending a lot of money on things like that right now. Um, so it's, it's kind of slow. And uh, as a result, you know, the money's just not there for me. And I have to sell stuff that I have to try to make ends meet for, for the ministry and pay my bills for what I'm trying to accomplish there. Now, I'm not saying that to say that I'm, I'm we're poor in the house. I mean, we're, we're very blessed and, and we have an income for our home. I'm speaking specifically for the income for my business and ministry. Um, so anyway, I want to say thank you to so many of you that have given. It was a huge blessing, still is. And uh, it is almost 24 hours, well, a little over 24 hours since I asked for the help and made that post. And we are still about $200, $250 short of meeting the goal completely. Um, so if anybody still wants to give, you still can at mattcrump.tv. Uh, you click on donate at the top, or you can go to uh, my ministry site at godsgotthis.love. That's godsgotthis.love. And you can click on donate there. It's the same page for both sites, and you can make your donation there. A couple of things I want to share with you. I showed a couple of clips in the video. This first one I'll show you is um, in Kesey, and this is with my spiritual son, Joffrey, who runs the uh, the orphanage there. I love him dearly, and he is filming some of the kids. And, you know, what really hurts is these kids in this video, they hadn't eaten in days. This is not the first time it recurs. We get food sometimes and it goes away or somebody steals all of our food from the kitchen. It happens to people coming in from the village that are anti-us, anti-orphanage, anti-Christian. And they try to harass us and they steal things out of our kitchen. Um, at gunpoint, at machetes, with sticks, I mean, all that kind of stuff. It's been tough. But anyway, this particular video you're about to see right now, just a few seconds I've got to show you, is a bunch of kids that have not been eating but this is what they're doing. All right, so then that was that was the kids there at uh, KCOC, Kenya Citadel Orphanage Center. And they're just so amazing. They're gorgeous, the way that they love God, they love people. And uh, I'm watching it here on the screen, what you guys just saw. And they were singing in, uh, they were singing in their language there in, uh, in Kisi, Africa, Kenya. And then um, they know how to do it in English too, which was amazing. So then the other thing is, uh, this next video I'm going to show to you is a section where the kids were, and a few of the adults were getting together to uh, pray as they were getting ready to get washed up and cleaned up for uh, for dinner, and praying that God would protect them from COVID because there's been a lot of problems there in that in that region with COVID, and this was that time that they were gathered together for prayer. So it might be a little difficult to hear because the, the video there wasn't exactly the best, but um, it gives you the idea. It was just amazing to see people that have not eaten in a while. Now this is in um, our, our work in Nairobi. Uh, besides the food problems, um, we are behind about three months in, uh, in rent there for the facility. It's a church and orphanage on one property. And um, that's, We've already gotten a letter saying we're going to be evicted. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I was so passionate yesterday about the video to say we need to help now, which we do, 24-hour period of time. I'm almost there. So I'm hoping by tomorrow our time, which will be tomorrow evening his time, um, we'll have the money. And actually, I have a, almost all of it. I need about $250 more, like I said. But um, I've tried sending it, actually, about uh, four or five times today through five different financial organizations, and they've all blocked or denied me from sending the money right now. I don't know why. i um, been trying to figure it out through PayPal, and PayPal's 
just running me around the whole uh, automated system thing right now. So it's been quite fun. So there's no doubt that um, you know we're trying to do good. There's always something there to try to block it. Uh, the Bible says that when the when evil, when the enemy, when the devil means for our destruction, what he means for our destruction, God means for our good. Sometimes it's hard to understand how something like this could be for good. Um, I would say that in a situation, I've gotten so many messages from, from Isaac and Joffrey in uh, Nairobi and Kisi telling me how grateful they are, how, um, how they thank God for the prayers, they're thanking God for the support, um, and every day they're doing that. Like the last night, Joffrey and I were talking before he went to bed, and he said, it's another, another night we go to bed hungry, but I believe God's going to do something. And um, this morning, I was able to send him the money to pay for the mortgage payment on the property that they were going to evict him from. So now he no longer has to fear because they've come to the door and he actually got the children in the orphanage and his family and they hid inside the orphanage, locked all the doors so the people wouldn't think they were there. I know it's not the best, but when you're scared, there's some things you do, right? And he, he hid from them because he knew they were there to, to kick him out. So now he has the money and um, that's not going to happen. The next step was, I mean, I had to get him there so we could stay, but but they haven't eaten, so I had to get some money past the mortgage problem for them to eat. I know I'm talking a lot tonight. I'm just trying to share my heart with you guys. It's late, so I don't know how many people are watching or listening right now. It looks like there's three of you on there right now. Steven, uh, how you doing, buddy? Says you can hear me. Ken, hey, how you doing, buddy? It's good to hear you from you, too. So, um, you know, it's just been an amazing little journey here in the past 24 hours, and I'm hoping by tomorrow we'll get there. I've had other folks that just say, hey, we're good job, Matt. You know, hope this goes well. <laughs> it's like, thank you. Can you fork up 10 bucks, 20 bucks? How about that? It'd be real nice too. Maybe don't go to Starbucks today and help these kids survive. It'd be fantastic and just crazy sometimes. I don't get it, but you know, that's why I said I don't like to ask for it. But uh, I'm so grateful for the, all of you that have given. And uh, for those of you that are just in the position where you can't and wish that you could, I understand. Totally understand. And uh, my prayer is that God will continue to bless you as well. Uh, there are a lot of difficulties for us in this world that are entrepreneurs and uh, for coaches and speakers and uh, a lot of hurdles that we're trying to face or overcome rather. And uh, over the next few days, I'm going to start pressing back into that. I've got a video tomorrow that I'm going to do that uh, I think will be quite interesting and I can't wait to share it with you. So um, just want to update you on what's happening there in Kenya. And uh, my prayer is by tomorrow morning, we'll have enough raised to uh, finish paying everything off. And then we just look for next month and we move that move forward. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be great to get all the problems behind us and move forward, you know. So um, just want to make an update for you tonight. It's about 15 minutes. That's what I wanted to do on this live. If you have any questions about how you can get involved, if you'd like to serve, in the area that I have where we're doing in, in Africa and other things around the world. Um, I don't talk what we do through our nonprofit organization, um, but I do quite a few things. And uh, no doubt we could use some help and some support in some of those areas. If you're good with communication, if you're good with um, reaching out to folks that, that you know may be interested in nonprofit organizations, if you are familiar with anybody that does grants that could help nonprofit organizations, be amazing. I mean. Honestly, if I had a ten or twenty thousand dollar grant uh, that was given to our nonprofit, I could I could fund the entire orphanage for a year off of that money, a whole year, and all the kids could eat and go to school and have their school supplies paid for, mortgages paid for. I mean, amazing to think that a number like that could take care of, of all those kids, twenty seven in one of the locations alone. Uh, and we, we balance between 27 and 40, just depends, because there's no shortage of kids on the street there. It's amazing how many kids that are orphans walk those streets um, every day with no family. And um, it's, a, it's, it's tough. So, uh, and I know there's places around the world, even in the United States, that need help. And, uh, you know, I do help in other things in the United States. It's not like I only do one thing, it's just Africa. There's other things that we do too. So if you're interested, you know, just hit me up, DM me here at LinkedIn. Uh, or you can email me, matt at mattcrump.tv. Pretty simple. 
and uh, we could talk about it. Maybe if you'd like to offer some of your services, maybe there's something you're thinking about that I'm not. I'd love to hear what that is as well. Um, there's other things we can do, I'd like to do, but I don't have the resources for right now uh, in the ways that we're trying to reach out around the world. So um, I appreciate you all so very much, and thank you again so much for your prayers. And uh, I've got some things coming out tomorrow, Friday. It is Phenomenal Friday, so I've got a cool video for that. And uh, jumping into another series on uh, Monday next week. Uh, actually, I think I've got a, uh, a Hope Revealed show coming up. I need to get, get one aired soon. I've got several that have been waiting to air for quite a while. I need to do that. I love you all. Thank you again for everything you've been doing. And I shall see you all soon. Oh, don't forget, I've got another episode of Matt Chat Live coming up soon. I've got a couple of shows with Bill Dolan coming up. We've got a show called Great Intentions. I can't wait for that. And then PJ, my friend in Australia, uh, he and I are going to be doing a show uh, in the very new near future as well. Don't have a name for it yet. Uh, we're still in the works on that one, but we'll have that coming up soon. So a couple of my Matt Chat Lives will be specifically about certain things. And uh, Great Intentions is about about goals and life-setting goals, but you can't have great goals and accomplish those things without first having great intentions. So it's going to be a really fantastic show, and Bill Dolan is an amazing, amazing man. He, uh, he died and came back to life, and he's had some amazing stories in his life. He's an a, a Emmy-nominated guy. He's done TV. He's done all kinds of stuff that's been so cool. I'll go more into it later, but uh, he's a fantastic guy. He has a great program now that he does as well that helps people all around the world. So I can't wait to share that show with you soon. I love you again all. I said it a thousand times, and I so so much mean it. I, I love being here every day for you guys. And if I, uh, if I have my way, it'll be for a much longer time. Thank you for your prayers for me. I've been through a lot lately, and uh, it's been two months since my brain surgery. And I had a biopsy. forgot I had a biopsy a couple weeks ago. And it took a while to get back, but the results came back two days ago, and it was benign. So I'm very grateful that the sample they took, they thought cancer may have come back, and it did not. So I was very grateful for that on my head. Um, so I will find out more in the next couple of months as I go back for my next checkup at the cancer center. All right, we'll see you all tomorrow. Don't forget, flip out.